viewers and welcome back to Dukascopy TV. I'm Natalie MacDonald. Up next, we're going to be talking about public speaking. You do it, I do it, we all have to do it at some point in the workplace. And John Zimmer is here to tell us a little bit more. John, thank you so much for coming in today. Nice to be here, Natalie. So firstly, give us a little bit of background information on yourself. What, what prompted you to get involved with public speaking and also helping others in terms of speech giving? Well, I began my career as a lawyer in one of Canada's biggest firms in Toronto, and I did a lot of corporate commercial litigation and environmental law. And that saw me going to court, going to tribunals, and then speaking at conferences a lot. So over the years, I ended up doing it quite a lot. Came over to Switzerland in 1998 and continued speaking in my, in my positions here. And eventually people started to ask me, hey, I've got a presentation. Could you give me a hand with this? And so I started helping them. From there, I was contacted by some uh, executive MBA programs at different universities. To, they said, you know, we think we need to introduce this subject into our curriculum. Can you help us? And from there, things just started to roll, and I started a blog on public speaking, and more uh, engagements came in. So it's something I love. I love working with people because, as you said uh, at the opening, we all have to do it. And if we can do it in a manner that's effective, um, it's, it's good for the speaker. It's good for the audience. With online marketing becoming so key now to businesses and a lot of business being done remotely, some might argue as to, as to the value of public speaking and, and really how relevant it is. Um, how does public speaking and, and public speech giving, how does that assist in terms of the marketing of a business and its, in its presence? It's essential, in my opinion, both online because if you are, if you, whether you're producing a video or whether you're giving a webinar or speaking online, you still have to use all of the, the basic skills of public speaking. You want to be understand, you want to be understood, you want to be persuasive, you want to be passionate. And in fact, when you speak online, it's harder because you, you don't have that face-to-face -face interaction. Having said that, there's still nothing that replaces the face-to-face. -face. And you know, businesses might do a lot of business over line, uh, online, but oftentimes it's going to meet with the clients or speak in front of their own employees where they're up on the stage and there's nothing between them and that's when you can really make the best connection. Who then would be an example to you within the business or entrepreneurial industry as an example of someone who speaks very well in public and, and similarly sort of converse to that, who would be an example perhaps of someone who has failed perhaps in the past to, to clearly deliver their message? Well, uh, uh, a well-known example uh, for somebody who really connected with his audiences was Steve Jobs. And I'm not just talking about his, his more recent uh, appearances, but if you go back and look at the tapes, there's, there's one tape in particular from 1997. He was speaking to his staff in Cupertino, and this is when he was launching the whole Think Different campaign. And he was just up on the stage in shorts and, uh, and his uh, trademark black uh, turtleneck. And you really felt his passion and his belief in what he was saying. And it's so important because, you know, if a speaker, if it feels like they're just going through the motions, the audience isn't going to believe it. But he always felt that he really believed in what he was saying. Other people who are good, uh, Seth Godin, Simon Sinek, they connect on that human level. Thinking in terms of a, of a recent experience where, where somebody didn't do so well, uh, Michael Bay's um, attempted promotion of, the, uh, of Samsung's TV at the International uh, Communications uh, Conference in Las Vegas, that didn't go very well. Uh, the teleprompter got all messed up. He got flustered and walked off. And I think, you know, even when things go wrong on stage, you can adapt. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, there's an old saying that the audience doesn't expect you to be perfect. They expect you to be present, to be there for them. What then would be three key ideas that you would give to our viewers in terms of helping them in their you know, next presentation that they would have to give, for example? Just three. Well, let's see. The first one I would say is prepare. And it seems common sense, but it's amazing how many people don't put the proper thought into, into preparing a speech or a presentation. And when I prepare, there are, there are lots of things to do, but a couple things to think about. Number one, what is your key message? What's that one thing that even if the audience forgets everything else, you want them to remember? And so I encourage my clients, I, I encourage them, write out your speech in a single sentence. Subject, predicate, verb, all those things we learned in grammar school, write it out. And if you can get it crystallized down to a single sentence, two at most, 
then the message is clear. And then anything that goes into the presentation, you just hold it up against that message. Does it support it? It can stay. If it doesn't, out it goes. Another thing, uh, the other question is, why should the audience care? Why, you know, sometimes people talk, but they don't give that enough thought to thinking, why is this relevant for the audience? And if you can't answer that question, then either you're giving the wrong speech or you're speaking to the wrong audience. <laughs> Another tip for people, I would say, simplicity is a big plus. I think many presentations fall down uh, today because speakers try and do too much. They try and cover too many topics, they cram too much information on their slides, and you know there are a couple of uh, quotes that I really like. One is from uh, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, he wrote the Le Petit Prince, he said, perfection is not when there's no more to add, it's when there's no more to take away. And Leonardo da Vinci said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication, and when people trim back the amount of detail on the slides, when they try and cover one or two things instead of ten, they're going to be much more successful. John, I feel like you could probably teach me a thing or two. Thank you so much for coming in today. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Natalie. That's all we've got time for right now, but do stay tuned to Ducascopy TV for all of your latest in financial market updates and analysis and items a little bit different, such as today's. Goodbye from me.